your head. Right. Gooster is brought to you in part by Nike. Additional bucks that keep our team supreme come from public television viewers like you and me. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The John Dean Crafton Team MacArthur Foundation. The Pew Charitable Trust. And the Youth Department of Education. But you can't say it all in breath. I bet you can. We don't know where he came from. He just showed up one night. What is that thing? He's not an alien. What is he? We think he might be a ghost. Be serious. You can see that? He wants to be friends with us. He can hear and he can't talk. He can read anything. and he writes with them. We're the only ones who can see him. That means he wants you on the team. You have to promise never to tell anybody about Ghost Rider. Hey, cool. We're the Ghost Rider team. We check out clues and solve mysteries. He's a ghost and he writes to us. Ghost Rider. What a trip. Come on, Rob. You've got to come with me to different spokes. I can't. We just got a whole new shipment of dirt bikes. I'm meeting Double T. That homeless guy who writes poems? Yep. Why? We made a special appointment since I got the whole afternoon off from school. I promised to show him some of my stories. But how could you pass up some brand new, sparkling, gleaming, Super hype dirt bikes. Man. Oh no. Oh man. What happened? Where's Double T? Uh, maybe. Maybe he forgot. No way. It was his idea to meet today. Look at his stuff. Well, look at this. Oh, Ghost Rider. What is it? Double T's book. The one he wrote all his personal poems in. This stuff he didn't sell. Shit's messed up. Something bad happened. Double T's in danger. Look at his card. His book of poems is ripped up. His card's turned over. Oh. And look at this. Um, maybe he tried. He broke it trying to defend himself. Uh, Mr. Mayron, excuse me. Oh, hello. Um, have you seen Double T today? His stuff's all right. It was like that when I opened this morning. And he was sitting there in the middle of it. I asked him, what happened? But he wouldn't talk to me. Why not? But you know, he's been acting nervous lately. Not talking too much. Always walking around like someone was about to sneak up on him. Excuse me. What if someone was after Double T? We've got to go back to my place and see if we can figure this out. did get Double T, how would we know? Where would we start looking? Well, maybe he wrote something about it in that book. It could be, but this is personal stuff. I wouldn't want anybody reading any of my poems. But what if he's hurt or something? So many of these pages are ripped out. There's only three poems left. This must be the last one he wrote. How do you know? All the other pages after it are blank. Well, that's a good place to start looking. Read it. Okay. It doesn't have a title. Fierce, fierce and charging toward me. I'm now a ship torn apart by a dark raging sea. Save me now, save me now. No, I've got to flee. Whoa. 
Double T told me he puts a piece of himself into every poem. This sounds like he's scared. Yeah. And that last line? No, I've got to flee. <sighs> he could be running away from something. This clinches it, Jamal. He's in trouble. Yeah. We've got to rally. Get the team to help. Now, why would they care? Hey, you care about this, right? Oh, yeah. And so do we. Come on, man. Take a shot at it. All you have to do is write Rally J so that people know to come to my house. I've never called a rally before. Hey, go ahead. Seven heads are better than one. Seven? Yeah, Ghost Rider. What a great supper. Good man thanks Lenny the Wise and her friends of five. We all look great, but don't you think my mask is the coolest? Uh, yeah, it is, Gabby. Thanks. It covers most of your face. <laughs> Very funny. Hey! Something's up. Let's go. Chinese sausage, sliced bamboo shoots, young corn. Mom, can we have sweet rice and black-eyed beans for dessert? Yes. Since this is your first dinner party, you get to choose. I can't wait until tomorrow night. Uh oh. Um, I forgot I was supposed to meet my friends this afternoon. You know, we got a lot of shopping to do for your dinner party. I know. I'll call them and tell them I can't come. Go ahead, but hurry. Listen, guys, Rob called this rally. All right, Rob. That's cool. great. He needs our help. Maybe I shouldn't have. I mean, I'll just go We're going, man. We're all here now. So go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm looking for my friend. I think he's in some kind of trouble, and he had to run away. Who is he? His name is Tommy Trueborn. Double T. Oh, yeah. I know who you mean. Who? That homeless guy who writes poems for people on the street and sells them for a buck? You've seen him. Uh-uh. I try not to look at homeless people. They're kind of scary. And some of them are dangerous. And a lot of them aren't. Last Thanksgiving, my dad's band played at a homeless shelter. And I helped serve the food. Some of them were real nice people, Gabby. Yeah, but some of them are kind of weird. I used to feel the same way. Until I met Double T. It was when he was reading some of his poetry. All right, everyone. The next writer's reading is in four weeks. Mrs. Lewis invited him to the youth center. Oh, um, mister? Double T. Double T? It's the name I go by. It's short for Tommy Trueborn. Oh. I liked your poems, especially that last one. What is it that you liked about it? It was real. Like he caught the feeling of not having a house to go home to. I don't have a house to go home to. You mean you're homeless? Yep. Well, then how'd you get to read here? I was invited. Miss Lewis, she saw me writing and selling some poems on the street corner. Well, like I said, you write really great poems. <laughs> well, like I said, thanks. After that, I started hanging out with him on his corner to talk about writing and stuff. You really hung out with him? If Double T were dangerous, Sally wouldn't have asked him to read at the youth center, mm. right? I guess. He helped me make my dad understand my writing a little more. After a while, we became friends. That's cool. Hey, being homeless can happen to anyone. You know that guy in my class, Rashad? Yeah, I heard his apartment burnt down. Yeah, the whole building was totaled. And his dad just lost his job. They didn't have anyone they can stay with in the city. So his family had to move into a shelter with a lot of other families for six whole months. That's got to be so hard. Not having a place to live. Well, I still don't understand. How can a homeless person 
be missing if he doesn't have a place to live. But he does, kind of. The corner is his place. Look, it's all right. Just forget it. He's not your friend like he is mine. I'll take Wait care of him myself. Give us a chance. They don't even know what happened on the corner. Okay. Well, we had an appointment to meet today. Double T never breaks his word. And, well, when we got there, all his stuff was wrecked, and we found his poetry book. Are his poems gone? There's a few left. Just three. Look, we think that Double T's in serious trouble, and Rob needs our help to find him. All right, I'm in. Me too. Gabby? Okay, I'm in too. Told you. So, where do we start? Well, we are looking for clues in the three poems that are left. Let's go to my room, take another look, and start solving this case. We'll need another copy of the poems. I've got my case book. Okay. Great. Okay, he called this one Saigon. Watermelons and tangerines and bowls of steaming rice. Bicycles and barefoot kids and paneled noodle carts turn to sparks before my eyes when the sirens sound and my helmet falls and the bombs pour hard on the groaning ground like fat black raindrops in the searing Saigon sky. see everything that you're reading. The colors, the sounds. Yeah, me too. The food, the bear for the kids, the bombs falling. What bombs? The black raindrops. Huh? This part. Listen. And the bombs pour hard on the groaning ground like fat black raindrops in a searing Saigon sky. Oh, I get it. The bombs are falling like fat black raindrops. But what's a Saigon? I've heard of it, but... How do you spell it? S-A-I-G-O-N. Got it. Here it is. Saigon. Former name is the capital of South Vietnam. Now known as Ho Chi Minh City. Vietnam. That's the country Tina's family is from. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have an encyclopedia? I want to look up Vietnam. Uh, sure, it's on the shelf. There was a war fought there. I know, because my dad was a pilot. Your dad's a pilot? Not anymore. He was in the Air Force, and he fought in Vietnam in the 60s. But he retired just before we moved here. Got it. This says that the Vietnam War was between 1957 and... 1975. The U.S. began sending lots of soldiers there in 1965. Hey, check these lines. My helmet falls and the bombs pour hard. You thinking what I'm thinking? Double T. He could have been in the war. Yeah, like my dad. And he wears that army jacket with all the patches on it. This is an important clue. But how do we know for sure that he was a soldier? Mr. Mehron at the newsstand. He would know. He and Double T talk all the time. I'm gonna check this out. You know what to do if you get a lead. What? Call a rally. Right. Well, hello, dog. <laughs> you must belong to the new folks here. I'm CC Jenkins, and I'm going to be delivering your mail. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna come. Whoa! Stay. Now look, Blondie, I've been delivering mail for a lot of years, and no dog, large or small, has growled me out of the yard. Even the dwarf and Doberman pincers like me. Just ask them. <laughs> OK, so polite conversation isn't getting that tail wagging. How about some goodies? <laughs> oh, you're not mad about liver kisses? I've got something that always works. This never fails. Ha. Oh! 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 Now I got you. 
you mangy, yellow, flea bitten bag of dog breath. Now I know your name. Goodbye, Winston. You haven't seen the last of C.C. Jenkins' letter carrier. Extraordinaire. A soldier? Yes, yes, he did tell me he fought in Vietnam. You were right. Would that help you find him? Yeah, my dad works for the Veterans Administration. They help soldiers and have records of everyone who served in the military. He can use the computer, find out where Double T used to live or where he sleeps at night. Sometimes he sleeps at the shelter of Mitchell Avenue. Really? Wait, I don't think they open until after six. Well, I'll check with my dad first at the VA and then I'll see if I can find Double T at the shelter. Thanks. Bye, good luck. This next poem is called To the Light. And it talks about Double T's corner, so it might have more clues. Let's see. My corner's grown into a jail lined with cold, thick cement. What a way to feel about the place you live, or sort of live. A jail made of cold cement. Oof. And so I bang and I bust and I break my way free. It sounds like he wants to get out of it. Intense. Beam myself toward a light at the long tunnel's end. Lay a flame in your sacred, sacred names. Lonely letters by the sea cry out to me. That part about banging and busting free, it sounds like another poem about running away. Where would he go? It says, toward a light at the long tunnel's end. But where's that? I'm asking Ghost Rider. A chance for hope. Like, if you're lost in a dark tunnel and you think you're never going to get out, but finally you see daylight and you know everything's going to be okay. But that still doesn't explain where Double T went. And what does lay a flame near sacred names mean? They say sacred in churches a lot. I want to look it up. Ah, here it is, sacred. Something that deserves deep respect. Like we're supposed to respect our parents? Mm. Or a holy person, like a saint. See, it says sacred names. It could be the name of a person that deserves deep respect. Well, if it's about saints, then maybe flame might be a candle. When I go to church, I sometimes light a candle for St. Anthony. Hey, yeah, we do stuff like that too. My dad lights a candle for my mother every year on the day she died. Maybe Double T bought a candle to show respect for the sacred names. Hey. There is a store that sells candles near Double T's corner. Maybe he went there. Let's check it out. We'll keep working on the poetry. Bye. Bye. See ya. Listen, my son is here, so uh, let me call you back. All right, very good. Bye. Oh, hi. What happened? School. Got out early and decided to see what your dad does all day, huh? Uh, no, not exactly. Your computer has information on all the people that served in the armed forces, right? Yes. Well, remember I told you about my friend, the one who writes poetry? Yes, the homeless man. Yeah, well, his name is Double T. His real name is Tommy Trueborn. And, well, the thing is, he's a vet. And I think he fought in the Vietnam War. And I need to know, well, I really need to know if your computer has any information on him. Well, I can't do that, Rob. It's confidential. The only people who can look at the files on the vets are members of their own family. It's important, Dad. He could be in some kind of danger. Well, that's all the more reason to say no, Rob. I don't want you getting mixed up in any business that's not your own, OK? Now listen, this homeless man could be dangerous. You don't understand. Double T is my friend. Just calm down, Rob. No, I'm going to find him whether you help me or not. The guy at the candle store is no help at all. It's not his fault. Double T just never bought a candle there. Well then, if flame isn't a clue to candle, what else could it be? 
Lay aflame your sacred names. Let's ask Ghost Rider. Good idea. Find your way home. But Double T didn't buy any candles. And he doesn't have a home. I know. But I think Ghost Rider knows how he feels. At least, does he live here sometimes? Miss, I told Thomas you. Thomas Norbert. I have been looking for him in all the shelters around here all day. You've got to know. Has he been here this week? Look, how many times do I have to tell you I can't give out that information? Thanks a lot. Hi. Sorry to ask you. I mean, I heard, but do you know a guy? Who's I like, don't know him, okay? He wore an army jacket. Colored patches all over. You do know him. Tommy Trueborn. Okay, okay. I know Double T. All right. Is he here? Mm, mm mm Haven't seen him in a couple of nights. See him? They call him Hush. He might know where Double T is. They're buddies. Hi, I'm looking for Double T. Have you seen him? <laughs> That's why they call him Hush. He doesn't say much at all. <laughs> I didn't have any luck either. That is the first time anybody smiled at me all day. I'm looking for a friend. It's like he just disappeared. I know what you mean. I'm looking for my dad. Oh, he used to live here? No, I, I was just hoping. The name's Rob. I'm Lisa. Hi. So, when's the last time? He's been gone over a year, but I wrote to him once a week anyway. And I didn't know where he lived, so I just sent all the letters to the VA. That means the Veterans Administration. Yeah, I know what it means. Your dad's a vet? Uh-huh. And the VA was the only place I could think of to write to him. And I didn't know if he was getting the letters that I sent him, so... Then, two months ago, out of the blue, I got this. Well, what did he say? Maybe there's a clue to where he is. Some clue. At least I knew he still lived in New York. Started writing him three times a week. Did you tell him you were coming? Yeah. In the last letter, I wrote the exact time and place that I would meet him. You never showed up, huh? No, I went to the VA, and they told me that he's been coming to pick up all my letters, but that he doesn't have an address. And so all they told me to do was go check all the homeless shelters around. Wish I could help you. So do I. I've been searching for him ever since I got off the bus from Connecticut. I haven't spent any time with the friend that I'm staying with, and now I only have two days left in New York. This can be a cold city. No joke. I'm just gonna forget it, forget the whole thing. What are you doing? Can I look at it? Yeah, I don't care. I don't want it anymore. Dear Lisa, Thank you for writing to me. I'm trying my best to deal with my past and come back to you. But sometimes I feel like a ship torn apart by a dark, raging sea. Please be patient with me, love, Dad. Touching, isn't it? I'm trying to deal with my past. I feel like a ship torn apart by a dark, raging sea. Hey, Lisa, this is weird, but, well, the thing's insane. Wait a minute. Let me take another look at something. Hey 
this is something. What? Well, the guy I told you I'm looking for. One of his poems has the same words as the postcard. Both of them say, a ship torn apart by a dark raging sea. Here and here. Love, Dad. Lisa, what's your father's name? Thomas Norbert. My friend's name is Tommy. Tommy Trueborn. People call him Double T. Did you say your father was a veteran? Yeah. He didn't fight in Vietnam, did he? Yeah. Why? Well, the guy I'm looking for, he's a Vietnam veteran also. Wait a minute. Norbert. Hey, look. They have a lot of the same letters. T, R, U. They have all the same letters. Yeah, but they're scrambled. Like someone used the same letters to make up a new name. Wh what are you getting at? Well, Double T's poem and your father's postcard. They both talk about feeling like a ship torn apart by a dark raging sea. Both are Vietnam veterans. Your father's Thomas Norbert. My friend is Tommy Trueborn, you think? Oh, get serious. I am serious. I think Double T's your father. Uh -huh.